ServiceNow Knowledge Store team is sponsored by ServiceNow. Here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Jeff Frick. Welcome back to San Francisco. This is theCUBE, and we've been covering Knowledge 14 uh, wall to wall. We started uh, on Tuesday, we had packed, packed almost 20 interviews on Tuesday, same on Wednesday. Uh, we got a half day today. Just had uh, Dan McGee on, Senior Vice President, who is really focused on the cloud infrastructure. Very interesting discussion that we've been having. Um, we're running the gamut, Jeff. Uh, we've, we've gone from sort of talking about the business of ServiceNow, their growth rate, their financials, things of that nature, their strategy of really extending beyond IT into the business, into IT operations management. We're going to have a discussion on that uh, this afternoon. And we're talking about hardcore stuff, configuration management, integration with Puppet and Chef and other sort of orchestration tools, um, as well as um, enterprise service management. We've talked to, the interesting thing is we talked to a lot of the system integrators, um, and when you walk the floor you get this too, but the guys at KPMG, Accenture, Ernie Young, Cloud Sherpers, uh, Ferition, they are taking um, the concept of service management into the lines of business. And this is where they have relationships. Uh, you know, these big, the, let's say the big five or the big six, you know, the new big five, they have relationships at the board level. Uh, and what's impressing me uh, is that they're all here. Uh, the only one's not here really, well, I guess IBM's not here and PwC isn't here, but, but you know, you got guys like Ernie Young giving p presentations on the floor, uh, Accenture, we're talking world-class organization. As I say, obviously IBM, PwC, Deloitte. Those are the big guys, and they, they have massive uh, numbers of employees worldwide, super deep industry expertise, and they're here. Why are they here? Because they <laughs> smell the dough. Right? <laughs> they know where the action is, and they know it's a long-term play. They're looking for, uh, how do I have a business value impact where we can you know, build long-term? And that's what they're doing, and so they are, sniffing this opportunity out, and this is not a flash in the pan in my view. Yeah, no, and they, and as you said, the Accenture and KPMG, they won't go unless they see that there's really an opportunity to build a practice, a business around a software solution, and uh, being involved in a number of startups over the years, that's not easy to do. So for them to see that opportunity and come in full force and know all the things that they can do to support that is impressive. A couple other things that, that I found interesting. One is that ServiceNow's ability to kind of execute on the vision of building a platform, delivering an application for their go-to-market in the early days, and now really extending back to that platform message. And I've been uh, actually surprised at how well the customers that we've had on have embraced that, that, met, that message. The other thing is that ServiceNow just doesn't mind letting us get under the covers. I think your conversation with Alan about the details in their data center um, was pretty unprecedented in, in that he basically answered everything you asked him, really getting under the covers and getting into some of the really fine details. Yeah, what's your networking like? What's your storage? Where are you going in this direction? Are you using going. Flash? Whose Flash are you using? They, talked, they, they even said, yeah, hey, we're using Fusion IO. Right. Are you going to be using Atomic Rights? No, not today. We're going to be doing that in the future. Right, and then we just had Dan on, and the same thing. Yeah. You know, he's, he's publishing numbers, and, and again, I think the interesting question that you asked him, and he came back, you know, is your security better than mine as a prospect? And he said, I can't say that, let's have a conversation. So it's a very mature and open way to really address this. Um, and again, Trend is their friend, it's a, it's a great SaaS application, they eat their own dog food, they're only running one application. It's really interesting that they decided to go with a single tenancy uh, architecture from the beginning, even though some might argue that ITSM doesn't seem that strategic to start out, but it certainly put them in a great position to go forward, and then most importantly, and again, part of this whole theme of letting us get under the covers a little bit, is having a parade of customers. And I think as a percentage, and we'll have to look back at some of the other shows that we do, but as a percentage of guests that we get on that are customers, is significantly higher than we see at most shows, which is one, refreshing um, to get their perspective. Two, it's been insightful that they are both shifting their focus from a technology point of view to more of a business point of view and running those tracks in parallel. And finally, I think it's because that's what you, our audience, really want to hear. If you're trying to make decisions about your path forward, it's really nice to hear from a peer. It's nice to hear from a customer, somebody in the trenches that's executing it. And we've had people that have been just starting. In fact, somebody said, you can't really talk about it, we're just about ready to execute the PO. To right. someone who's been here for four years, when, they were, when ServiceNow was 50 people, uh, and the fruition uh, market fruition took a gamble that this was uh, a company we want to make a bet with. So it's been 
really interesting to see how they've transitioned from just the ITSM, which really was a lot of the messaging last year, to the platform and the extending further and deeper into the enterprise. So a lot going on here. Um, I, I'm interested in the M&A piece too, Jeff. Um, I think that, I mean, the Mira 42 acquisition was notable. It's getting uh, ServiceNow into the whole analytics space and a little bit into the, the sort of being able to visualize some of the data. I think that's one of the un other big untapped areas of the TAM. And, and ServiceNow is not talking about this, and certainly not in a big way. They're, they're talking a little bit about the analytics piece. But I think there's a huge opportunity long term for ServiceNow in data. And specifically, they're capturing so much data um, uh, that their customers have. If they can provide tools and capabilities to extract insight from that data, people will pay for that. I have no doubt about it. Now, it's the customer's data now, so in theory, the customer could act on that data themselves, but so with, I, 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 they, ServiceNow hasn't even talked to, to us about this, but if, if, if I were those guys, I would be looking, it's not necessarily a 2014 or 15 initiative, but longer term, I would be looking at potentially making acquisitions uh, to be able to, to gain more insights to that data, maybe visualize that data, uh, maybe, or maybe they partner up, Maybe they partner up with a, a Tableau or, 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 or a, a ClickTech or a Summa, uh, but, but, or, or maybe they develop them in-house. I'm not sure what the right play is there, but I am very confident that there's gold in that data. And if they can start providing services to analyze that data, get insights from that data, and act on that data, their customers will pay for it. And that's where that CMDB really comes into play, right? Because then you can put all these other applications based right. on that data to extract a value in a unified view. The piece I'm looking forward to today is we're going to have uh, Dave Schneider on, the VP and worldwide uh, head of sales. And I'm just kind of curious how the sales conversation has shifted in terms of prioritization from a customer point of view. You know, now that we're you know, kind of well down the path, still early days, but still you know, we're into the game on the cloud and what the cloud is and enterprise cloud, is the security conversation, the uptime conversation, is, is that kind of moving down the list of priorities from a customer point of view, going through that process, and are other things more rising to the top? Because you know, there's a lot of attributes that people review, but the relative rank order changes, and I'm curious to see if we can get kind of a leading indicator as to, like we talked about with Red Hat a couple weeks ago, where security and infrastructure and enterprise readiness is, it starts to become more of a presumed yes, it's good, now let's talk about features functionality, where we're going to go from here, the data, the business impacts. And so I'm curious and looking forward to talking to Dan about that. Yeah, now of course the other little sideshow that's been going all week is the, uh, the BMC photo bombs, I mean, essentially, <laughs> right? Uh, I mean, you've, you've had you know, closer visibility to it than I have, but we've seen you know, that, you know, driving, I don't know, some kind of buses around, we saw the little, those handouts yesterday that they were doing. They got buses, they got um, segways with uh, little shields. It looks like a Cecil B. DeMille mo uh, movie. It's funny, right? I mean, uh, what do you make of that? What do yeah. you make of that, uh, that? You know, we see it a lot at shows where competitors have their trucks that drive around and go, but I, I think what's interesting is kind of the Twitter reaction from the folks that are here saying maybe they should invest more time in their products and less time in the buses out running around in front of the, the, uh, the venue. We you know. <laughs> Uh, the other great thing I like about ServiceNow that we've talked about numerous times is, you know, is anyone baking them a cake? Is anyone ba making BMC cakes? I, I, I still think that's just the, f the most interesting uh, and actual insightful indicator about how people feel about this, is that they bake a well, cake, they're I, so happy I'd, after they finish I'd it. I'd really like to unpack this a little bit more. I think, I think from my standpoint, I feel like I got to do more research here. I mean, I've read pretty thoroughly the, the Gartner Magic Quadrant on, uh, on IT service management. You know, BMC is a leader in that quadrant. Uh, what, what, I, what I haven't done is talk to uh, an, uh, enough. I talked to some uh, remedy customers. Talk to some, and there seems there's a dissonance to me uh, uh, when I when I talk to ServiceNow customers. I've talked to a lot of ServiceNow customers. It's a pretty consistent story. Um, this challenges, right? We've talked about the UI uh, uh, issues, which they're clearly working on. We talked about the challenges of, of single CMDB and getting the organization around that, but okay, but the vast majority of the conversation is the excitement, the energy, the transformation, the business value creation. I don't get that when I talk to some of the competitors' customers. Um, what I get is features, you know, they have that too, they have that too, yep, mobile, check. You know, they, can, they can rent you the software, check, 
and what they could do on, on premise. That's something that ServiceNow hasn't chosen to do at this point in time. I'm not sure that's an advantage. Look at guys like Workday, you know, and Amazon. Yeah. They're yeah. not doing on premise either. Yeah. The future's cloud, folks. But 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 so I, I would like to understand this better. We'll give BMC equal time. Love to have those guys on. Love to have some customers on, and so welcome to. To, to do that, that would be that would be great to yeah. see. So so more work to be done there. But that that struck me as kind of odd. It, uh, to me, it almost it confirms the impact that ServiceNow is having in the marketplace. Right. It's a big validation. I mean, we don't see the HP OpenView guys running around out there. I'm sure there's other competition out there as well. But it does kind of say, hey, look at us, look at us. Um, it's very. I don't, know, I don't think it's really effective, and you know. I don't well, know. I mean, it's, 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 know, EM, it's, it's EMC and Oracle like, right? right? EMC and Oracle are right. known to do those things, but but they're. You know, they're companies that are, I think, you know, strong brands. You know, you sort of look at Oracle, you know, obviously huge leader, uh, you know, Larry Ellison, you know, d giant in the industry, EMC with Tucci doing the Federation. I mean, they're moving, they're growing, they're, they're perceived as, you know, having a real impact in the business. You got BMC going private. I, I just, I found it a bit strange. I, I don't know, I, I wonder, you know what the what the debrief on that is going to be back at back at BMC as to whether or not that was worth it. So that was kind of a again. Yeah, they're that they're doing show. sponsored tweets on the Twitter stream. So you know they're they're. Well, you know maybe they, you know maybe that, that's the, maybe they know, well they know this is where the action yeah. is. This yeah. is where the customers are. So okay, we want to we want to you know uh, keep our name in there. So okay, but that's that's again a little, sort of a little sideshow. So. Um, so we've been unpacking, you know, these and other trends this whole week. This is a this is a marketplace that is is changing. You know, it's going from one that's a sort of boring tools market to one that's transformational. Big message from Frank Slootman on Monday was that CIOs need to be business leaders. Um, and I'm, you know, I tweeted out, okay, is that is that reasonable? Is that practical to expect that? And then we have CIO of Symantec on, CIO of Safeway on, CIO of Intuit on, all of them talking business, go to market, channel, M&A, right? Yeah. That, that's yeah. exactly what Frank Slootman was talking about. So I love the fact that they're able to back up their marketing messages with actual customer examples. Yeah, which again is, of all the shows we do, I, I think we get way more customers at this show as a percentage of our total guests than any other show, which is, which is terrific that they're willing to come on, they're willing to talk about what they're doing, they're excited about the, what they're doing, and then to, the synergy with the messaging that you get from the corporate side is is almost uncanny. Yeah, I mean, you try to have some critical analysis at, at these events, obviously, and we talked about the UI, we talked about the challenge, the political challenges of single CMDV, we've talked about going beyond IT service management, we've talked about so the somewhat fuzziness of the TAM, uh, but I, 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 each one of those, I mean, either ServiceNow has an answer, or in the case of the TAM, I, I get the feeling that this thing is a lot bigger uh, than, than many people realize. Um, now, of course, the, the 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 stock market earlier this year and, and last year was was validating that, I guess, uh, and it's pulled back now. You see, Box pulled its IPO for now. No, I did not um, see that. Yeah, and and uh, Box didn't comment, but people are speculating that it's because the climate for for cloud companies has not been great, and they uh, CNBC this morning cited ServiceNow. I think they cited Workday uh, and some others. Which is actually kind of interesting. So you know the old buy low, sell high. So you know Box doesn't want to sell its shares low to the to the public. So they're just waiting for the suckers to buy at a higher <laughs> price. I guess uh, I know, it's too bad. But no, my point is maybe it's a buying signal for the likes of Workday and ServiceNow, which are cloud. And then even I would throw in their Splunk and Tableau. Right. That these four stocks tend to trade together with with some others, but they're totally different companies, totally different business models, different products. You know, Tableau really doesn't even, I mean, they're really not even a cloud play. They're not a right. cloud play. You know, they're a big data play and a visualization play. Um, but they seem to trade in lockstep, maybe not complete lockstep, but roughly equivalent to the work days and the service now. So, so maybe this is a, 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 a buying opportunity for some. I have said consistently this pullback, in my opinion, is very healthy. I'm quite happy about it because I thought the market was getting a little bit ahead of its skis. Yeah, the other thing that strikes me is just the age of some of these legacy applications. When you think in terms of the evolution of technology and how fast things are moving, and I think one of the, the more kind of insightful things that, that we heard was, was Fred talking about the XP Windows, or excuse me, Explorer 6 uh, removal as a significant gate uh, to being able to move forward with newer age uh, technologies like HTML5, delivering things via the cloud. So I think, um, for, for some of the legacy folks, that, that's definitely 
uh, a big uh, encumbrance that they have to overcome. 15 years in the technology cycle is a long time. I mean, I know we don't uh, depreciate our stuff out over that type of a schedule, so I think that, that's a big factor uh, that enables people like ServiceNow uh, and some of the other companies that you mentioned to kind of get out of the gate using a much more modern architecture, taking advantage of, of ubiquitous networks and taking advantage of, of a lot of infrastructure and computing power and GPU power and, and a lot of things to bring to bear on the business problem and then to this kind of singular focus around a particular area and really trying to knock it out of the park. So it's been a, a good show and, and I look forward to wrapping it up with a few more great guests here on theCUBE. Yeah, the only other point I want to make is again, we're trying, trying to do some critical analysis. We're independent media, right? We're right. trying to, we're right. analysts, we're trying to sort of look at all the angles. The other one is, is you know, we talked about this last year, was the, 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 the SMB opportunity. And the reason why we came to this conclusion is because what happened was Jeff and I were talking to so many customers and they were so enthusiastic and we were saying, we want this. We want to eliminate email, you know, because right, right. we run so much of our business on email and Google Docs and spreadsheets, and it's a it's a bloody nightmare. I mean, it's really hard to keep track of. You, you think about how how much productivity you lose just trying to find stuff, and uh, and so that mid market opportunity, that SMB piece, they're gonna ServiceNow is gonna put their toe in the water there. Frank Slootman's been very clear: we're not going hard. Uh, we're, not, we're not. No, he didn't say that. He said we're we're not going to lose focus on the global 2000. That was G2K. We're, G2K, we're, G2K. we're doubling G2K. down on that. We're going into Italy because there's a few right. of them so, there. <laughs> but they got this little. But we'll we'll throw a few dollars over here and see what happens. And and I think that's a big opportunity for them uh, longer term as well. That plus the analytics. All right, we got to leave it there. We'll be right back with our next guest. This is uh, Dave Vellante with Jeff Brickton. This is the Cube. We're live from San Francisco. We'll be right back. <laughs>